Hello, 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 hello. What up, guys? It's your boy K15. It's Kenny. We're here. Uh, I've got this really interesting article from Event Hub and Inside Gamer. Basically, someone was able to get an interview with uh, Nakayama, the director for Street Fighter 6. I think he also directed Street Fighter 5. But basically, the whole conversation was, you know, modern. What are your thoughts on modern? How has modern affected the game in the long run? So I think this is a really good article to go over. And, you know, some people would rather just hear this as a podcast than, you know, actually read it. So that's what I am here to do. I'll also go ahead and discuss what the conversation is all about. So as we all know, Street Fighter VI has had a lot of success. They've moved 2 million units. So uh, in this recent interview with Inside Games, uh, director Nakayama is going to talk about, you know, the six button layout and what modern does different and how it helps. Inside Games ask, you said before the release of the game that modern controls are not an easy mode and that modern controls does not equal beginner a lot. But here on the media side, We've largely presented modern controls as easy inputs or fit for beginners. So maybe your thoughts on them haven't been properly reflected by us. We've also seen a bit of war between modern and classic controls. <laughs> this is so true. I'm in a lot of gaming groups, Street Fighter groups, and uh, it's just every other day, or every day rather, it's modern versus classic. Classic players complain about modern. Modern players defend their uh, their control scheme, and it's just it's an ever never ending battle, uh, ever since it dropped. So, uh, reflecting on how reflecting on it now, after the release of the game, please explain your aim with the inclusion of modern controls. Director Nakayama says there are a lot of difficult inputs in fighting games. Yes, trust me, there are. I think you can have fun even just using normal moves but you definitely feel like you're missing out if you can't do the special moves so the starting point for developing modern controls was to make it so that everyone will be able to use special moves also needing to have an arcade stick to be able to play to the fullest is a difficult ask he felt that it was an absolute necessity to have controls that are fully optimized for the controller that comes with your game system okay i i definitely agree with uh director nakayama a bit i always felt you know and I'm speaking as someone who I guess I could consider myself a bit of an outsider, seeing as Street Fighter VI is the first competitive Street Fighter. I played all the other Street Fighters, but never competitively, because the control schemes were just so, you know, ridiculously hard, at least for me. Especially doing specials with the bumper buttons on the control just didn't feel right. Especially because I've also been playing a lot more combat. So, modern on normal PlayStation and Xbox controllers is just, it's a godsend. It is literally made for that controller scheme. So um, th once again, thank you, uh, Director Nakayama. Producer, this is Nakayama talking right now. Producer Shuhei Matsumoto chimes in to reinforce the notion that a major aim was to allow players to play competently as quickly as possible so as to keep them entertained and away from the frustrated feelings the genre has become infamous for causing. This is absolutely true. Um, a lot of people want to try fighting games, but the average person just does not have the patience. For every 50 people that try to get into fighting games, only around 5 people, I'm not even kidding, are able to keep the patience to learn the game. This is a fact. This is absolutely a fact. And Street Fighter is one of the harder fighting games out there. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, it's a hard game, without a doubt. I know people who have mastered the, the combo system and all, you know, just with way more fighting game knowledge, you're like, oh, yeah, it was easy for me. You know, some people got it, and some people don't. It's just, it's just how it is. Okay, producer Matsumoto goes ahead and adds to the conversation. He says, Street Fighter is really the type of game where the more you play, the more fun it becomes. This is true. The battle of reads between you and your opponent, the opponent missing your special or punishing your opponent for careless approach, 
All of this plays into it. He's right. Even if you react to it in your head, not being able to get the move out when it counts was something that happened to myself a lot as well. By introducing modern controls, we feel like we've been able to abbreviate the gap for people who use them and make them feel Street Fighter is much fun a lot faster. Absolutely, absolutely true. Um, you know, I tried playing Street Fighter V, I just couldn't get into it. You know, the control schemes just weren't hidden. It, it was just so hard. I mean, I, I could do it, but I was like, Jesus, well, well, I'm doing half quarter circles. I might as well just go play, you know, Mortal Kombat where the inputs are, you know, way more simplified. So I definitely appreciate this approach in Street Fighter 6. You know, keep the modern for people who want to do that, you know, at the cost of damage. And uh, keep the classic for the people, you know, who want to go all out and get all the control their uh, character offers. And once again, the, the design in Street Fighter 6 is amazing. It's it's peak. I love Jury. I love, like, Chun-Li, Kami. All their designs are, are amazing. Okay. Nakayama then adds a line about how he and his team could have made modern controls the only option, perhaps implying how numerous the more casual fan base is. This statement paired with the follow-up from Matsumoto makes for a sentiment that may make classic control diehards a bit nervous for the future of the franchise. Um, I don't think people have to worry at all. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I, 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 I guess... If, if I had to take an uh, educated guess, I guess he was just joking a little bit, but they're not taking Classic away. Yeah, so that's the legacy of Street Fighter. You take that away, you know, you lose a core audience that could carry your game longer. But I, I guess if you make it modern the whole way, I guess you could make more sales that way. Maybe you can. Uh, maybe you move, instead of moving 2 million, you move 4 million. And one thing about casual people is they, they tend to move fast. They, they get bored of a game and they move on to the next big thing. And, you know, Street Fighter did its thing. It, it, got, the, it got a bunch of casuals in. It made a whole bunch of sales. But I still think, you know, the casuals will always be back with each new DLC, each new um, version of the game, Alpha, Turbo, Street Fighter 6. They'll be back. And, you know, and as long as Modern is there to keep them entertained, they'll stay. So I'm very glad for Modern. And please, Street Fighter, don't take away the legacy control schemes. These, these classic, well, not all of them, but a, a good amount of them are really rabid. They, they will cry and threaten to kill you if you do that. Director Nakayama says, To put it bluntly, we could have just made the game without classic controls at all if we wanted to. But that would have forced this ideal upon all the legacy fans and caused a lot of problems that way instead. On the development staff, we actually have a lot of old players and a lot of them said, I don't like you calling it classic controls. So we figured we would have it all in there and let the players settle it in matches, which is better. <laughs> okay. Producer Matsumoto says, looking at the data, the rate of modern control player is increasing. This is true. I, I watch a bunch of because I've been labbing Chun-Li lately, and there, there was a bunch of modern Chun-Li's Chun in Japan. I don't put region, I just put modern controls, and there's a whole bunch of Japanese people just playing with modern. It's amazing. So it, it feels like while ja Japan are way more accepting of modern, we over here at the West, we're like, we're, we're, I guess we still have this elitist mindset. Oh, modern control, scrub, scrub. But uh, other than that, the, a, a lot of, you know, Western Street Fighter players are very accepting of modern. I went to a gaming meetup on Friday, and it was a Street Fighter tournament. I got absolutely destroyed. But, uh, you know, <laughs> every now and then, um, when I would get matched up against someone, and I picked modern, he was, oh, he said, oh, modern, okay. You know, something like that. And then... They, I, I lost two games against really good classics, but the two classics that beat me, I got one game. I won a game. So I was, it ended 2 1, 2 1. And these were really good people. So they weren't used to modern. Like they, they were like, holy crap, modern Chun Li plays different from classic Chun Li. So yeah, it's the, once you're fighting a modern person, you're practically fighting, you know, the same character but utilizing different guns. Let's say classic Chun-Li is using AK-47s. If you're fighting a modern Chun-Li, she is using uh, M-14s. You know, she's just moving different. 
So they had to adapt. Yeah, I could hear, oh, modern is a bit different. Okay, interesting. I could hear them say stuff like that. So that's cool. But they were very accepting of me. And I had absolutely, I had absolute fun at the uh, tournament. Okay. Let's keep going. For the time being, players have boat options at their disposal and seem to be enjoying Street Fighter VI immensely as a result. We've seen pro players seriously consider using the simplified scheme, but the majority of high-end endeavors are still being played almost exclusively classic. True. We'll be especially interested to see how EVO plays out next weekend, or whether any of the finalists using modern controls will be there. I really hope there's some modern controls, you know, represent. For now, let us know in the comments. Okay, this is just Event Hub, just talking. So yeah, this is the article. This is where we are at modern. I personally, I'm a modern stan. I will always support modern. You know, no gatekeeping. We don't gatekeep over here. Sorry, classics. We're here to stay. You know, the modern versus classic conversation will go on forever and it is entertaining there have been some good memes from it and uh, I think this is a good time to talk about Rashid since we're still on Street Fighter did I buy Rashid did I buy the DLC no I absolutely did not but uh, fortunately there are rental systems on Street Fighter 6 you know they allow you to rent the game for one hour which is a great amazing feature NRS looking at you y'all should try this so uh, the rental system allows you to try the player, the character, and if you're really into him, you can go ahead and buy him. So Rashid is a, he's a very interesting character. He has a lot of jump arounds. He doesn't stay still. Um, he, it's impossible for Rashid to stay still. If you are staying still with Rashid, all I gotta say is that is a very interesting play style. But most of the Rashids I fought, you know, they, they're jumpy. They can't help themselves. The wind allows them to move in ways that most of the characters cannot. In fact, I believe this character has a, a triple jump, maybe a double jump at the very least. But there are certain moves he can do that, you know, allow him to bypass the projectile game if he wants to. And uh, he's he also has very interesting combos. Are they hard to pull off? Not really. I think they're decent enough. Anyone can utilize Rashid if you put the time into it. He has that Eagle Strike. I think that Eagle Strike is one of his most interesting moves. The Eagle Strike is the kick. It's the kick that sends him flying all across the map. It's uh, it's punishable. You know, it's hard to punish, but it's also very punishable depending on the characters you use. I'm a jury main. In this clip, I'm playing with Chun-Li, but I am primarily a jury main. So whenever he does the Eagle Strike Kick, I am able to drive rush and punish at least 8 out of 10. If he uses the heavy version, yeah, definitely a punish. DOD, I'm not so sure because that bounces him all the way back. But at least they're spending two bars to do that and then they won't do it again, especially if you punish. But Rashid is very interesting. Where he lies on the ranks right now, the tier list, I, I honestly don't know. But I do feel Jury is a great, a great counter for Rashid. I felt that with Jury, I was able to punish a bunch of his movement options. When he does the uh, the double jump thingy and he is right above my Jury, I can easily punish with her uh, DP. Her spin and wheel kick. Easy. Just do a heavy version or the OD and you'll get it. Easy. I don't know if he can move away from that or if he has to commit to the jump. And as well as his eagle strike kick, he can, Jui can punish that as well. Overall, he's a very interesting character. I like his design. I like some of his win animations. He is just this very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just very upbeat, you know, very happy character. Although I watched a bit of his wall tour gameplay and i guess his personality is that of a, a spoiled prince i might be wrong but if that's what they were going for well they definitely captured that uh that identity i feel like he is he would be a very annoying person to be around for a long period of time you can only enjoy that personality in short bursts or if he's showing you a good time so you went to his kingdom but anyway, that's how I feel about Rashid. I think he's a decent character. If I had to take a guess at what tier he would be, he would probably be maybe B. I don't know. I'm mostly looking forward to uh, Akuma and 
Aki. Aki, the poison lady. If you can tell, I'm a very big enjoyer of the Street Fighter ladies. But that's all I've got to say about Rashid. Uh, let's go on to the next big thing. Okay, in more recent news, Daigo has shared his thoughts about whether or not Street Fighter 6 is scrubby. If you've been out of the loop, Menard, you know, two-time Capcom champion, left his thoughts on whether or not Street Fighter 6 was scrubby. And yes, he said it was very scrubby. To be honest, I should add the context that he said this information after he lost the uh, online tournament. So as soon as he lost the online tournament, he went on Twitter and just, you know, he just, Street Fighter 6 is so scrubby. And, you know, it, 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 you can understand why he did that. You, so you probably don't want to take that at full face value. But you got to remember, Menard is, is two-time EVO, not EVO, Capcom champion. That's a big deal. He had to fight a bunch of really good people to get to that level. But recently we had Daigo also, also, you know, share his two cents on whether or not, you know, Street Fighter 6 is scrubby. Now, um, I will leave a link to the interview. Well, not the interview. His thoughts in the comments in the description below. And you can go ahead and click on it and hear it. But I will try to, uh, you know, sort of just go over that information right here. Let's see. It, it seems like Daigo does agree with Menard that Street Fighter 6 is a bit scrubby. You know, he says he did that. He, he he says, I think they did that on purpose. They being the devs. That's what the developers wanted. They think it will help new players get into Street Fighter 6. So what's the problem if a game is very scrubby? From a professional perspective, it's a problem because you can't prove your actual skills in short matches. You won't get consistent results if it's a first to two or first to three. But we need, but all we need to do is play longer matches. He goes on to say, take Street Fighter 2 Turbo. You should at least play a first to five, at least. Try playing a first to one with that game. That's insane. You throw one fireball and the opponent jumps and you're eliminated so basically he thinks that you know if we want to get more consistent results especially with you know a scrubby mechanics third are in street fighter 6 we need to introduce way longer sets and you know i i definitely agree because i would watch all these tournaments and a first or two a first or three that's how you determine who the best is you know, I, 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 I get it. You know, no one wants to sit there and watch, you know, a first to 10. I do, low key. That would be like, what, a 30 minute game? Oh, more than a 30 minute game. That could enter an hour. But that, that's ridiculously long. But I think a first to five is more than fair. The reason I say this is because I play people in the first to 10s. And they, they, you know, the first four games, they are doing better than me. But by the fifth, I've been, you know, I start reading the gimmicks i started getting used to their plan your game plan and then i catch up and then they have to get used to my game plan and catch up it's it's you know there's way more back and forth and way more space to figure out who is actually the best when you do a first or two you know the the game is over that fast and you don't get that actual information as to who the best is basically it's just who can figure out the gimmicks faster in a first or two the gimmicks being you know the scrubbiness that uh, Daigo is talking about. And then Daigo goes on to say, no matter how you think of it, this game isn't for first to two. I, I, I'm inclined to agree with Daigo. You know, this, I, I think they should make evil finals at least a first to five. Um, but how we can figure out with the tournament plan, advertising, renting space venue it, it, it's ridiculous you know a lot of people watch fighting games to be entertained so uh yeah it is what it is let me know what you guys think okay in other news idom finally dropped a tier list for street fighter idom is an american hero i believe he's american um i remember his street fighter 5 run with laura man i was really rooting for him you know he got second place but he went above and beyond and just seeing him represent you know america like that it really made me you know i was like damn proud to be an american good shit i don but i don just recently released his tier list and if you are not you know watching this and you're listening to your podcast i can quickly talk about it for you 
on S rank. Okay, first of all, Idom doesn't believe in C's and D's. He has S rank, A plus, A, A minus, <laughs> and B. We can already imagine who's at the bottom. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. But at S rank, the number one player he believes is Luke. Luke. Luke is very good in this game. I struggle against Luke's. And next is Guile. I think Guile should be before Luke because I think Guile is the best character in this game because I hate fighting Guile. Because I hate fighting Guile. And then next is Jury, followed by Ken, and then DJ. For A, he has Cami, Chun Li, JP, Blanca, Marissa, and Honda. And A is Ryu, followed by Dawson. A minus is Jamie. Manon, Kimberly, and Lily. And at B, there's only one character at B. I'm sure you guys saw this coming. It is Zangief. So, uh, yeah, that's Idom's tier list. Do I agree with this tier list? Look, w when the pro players start only living, leaving, you know, ending the tier list at B, it's I, I don't even know what opinion to have anymore. Because I, I don't know. But uh, overall, if, if I had to, I'll put this S, A, B, C, D. That's how I would use it. I, I, I agree. Uh, I think this is a good list. It's a good list. It makes sense to me. Um, Luke being, Luke and Guile being the two best make absolute sense to me. Especially Guile, because I hate fighting that fucking bastard. I shouldn't have cursed. Especially Guile, because I hate fighting that guy. And in, uh, in other news, Project L is out. This is a game developed by Riot Games. They are <laughs> making their own fighting game. It's called Project L. Can you imagine if this game just bombs? That name would be so ironic. You know, Project L. And then the game bombs and there's no one playing it. And there's like only 200 people online when there's over, a t you know, 10,000 people online on Street Fighter 6 and MK1 and there was only 200 people online on Project Dell. That Project Dell name will be ironic. I never got to play the game. I watched a whole bunch of people cover it like Justin and Max, you know, and they are, I, I, they look like they really enjoyed what they had to play. I took a good look at it, I watched a bunch of gameplays and the only person that I, I say stood out to me was the the foxtail lady you know she kind of reminded me of you know the nine tail fox a little bit maybe that's what they're going for but other than that i have no idea how the game plays i do like the graphics um i i think i heard that it is also a one button special input so you don't have to do any of that diagonal and back forward zigzag inputs to get specials out you can do that just by pointing at a direction and pressing the special button. So sort of like uh, DNF. This is good. This is good. Um, you know, not all games have to be extremely complex with the uh, motion inputs. We have a whole bunch of games that do that. King of Fighters, Street Fighter, Soul Calibur, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom, MK to a certain degree. They're all out there for you. So, um... Are you looking forward to Project Dell? Uh, let me know. Man, that Project Dell, this game better not bomb. If it bombs, I'll be making jokes all day long. Now we can talk about Mortal Kombat. It looks like uh, NRS already confirmed the date for the beta. We will be having the beta August 18th all the way to August 20th. First, so that's a decent amount of days to have the beta. Now, uh, how many days is that? Let's see 18, 19, 20, 21. So, three days of the beta that's a decent amount of time. And the playable characters in the beta will be Liu Kang, Sub Zero, Kenshi, Katana, Johnny Cage, Johnny Cage, and Lee Mei. I'm really looking forward to Johnny Cage and Lee Mei in the beta. As for the cameos, we will get to try out Kano, Sonya, Jax, and Frost. Hmm. So I guess Frost is one of the new cameos. Uh, we already had the other players in the uh, stress stress test beta. But uh, yeah, that's a uh, very good information to have. One thing I will I will say. Oh, I just bit my cheek. Oh, that hurt. One thing I will say that I'm not really a fan of is the fact that you have to pre-order 
the game to get access to the beta. That's unfortunate. I, I wish they wouldn't do it that way. Capcom gave us like a bunch of betas that were absolutely free. You know, a couple closed betas and the final beta, the open beta was was a hundred percent free. You know, and it had crossplay. So that that was a great experience. I, I really enjoyed that. I wish NRS will do the same, but unfortunately, you know, NRS they are an American company first and foremost. So the most important thing you see why sub zero just killed himself if, if you are not watching this and you're using this as a podcast sub zero literally just snapped his own neck in a quality it's one of the footages i've got running in the background but uh, as i was saying nrs is an american company first and foremost they prioritize making money above everything else you know you know it sucks but that's how it is so if you want to play the beta you have to pre-order it Another issue I have is the fact that the uh, pre uh, the beta is not on PC. The beta is only on consoles. Unfortunately, why this is the case, I do not know. And, and don't give me the crap about they're trying to protect the game so it doesn't get cracked. There, there are so many things they can do to make sure the game is, you know, not cracked on PC. There's so many things they could do. But, uh, you know, th that's unfortunately what we have to deal with. And uh, also... Expect some MK1 information in, you know, EVO. We've got EVO coming up, so expect a bunch of MK1 information. We will probably get a, a new trailer. I think Ed Boon's talking about, you know, potentially more news at EVO. Looking forward to that. I wonder if it will be Raiko. A lot of people in the MK streets are seeing this. You revealed you and Evil will have Raiko in it. And Raiko has been confirmed in the game. Um, there were a bunch of leaks, story gameplay leaks, that showcased Raiko and Mortaro. Or Motero. I always pronounce the Mortaro. That's the uh, center dude. Okay, really looking forward to it. Uh, MK1 is something that I'm looking forward to. Some, you know, choices they've made that I'm not really a fan of. But uh, we'll see in the long run. But uh, yeah, I think we covered everything we have to uh, talk about in this podcast for the FGC. Please let me know what you think in the comment sections below. Have a wonderful day and peace.